So what is an inductor? Well, let's start with the things we know. If I have a wire, put it up here, I connect it in a circuit and apply a voltage, a certain amount of current will flow. Okay. And when that current flows, what happens? A magnetic field is created around the wire. Now with DC, a steady DC, there will be a magnetic field, but it will be static. However, with AC, what happens? AC current flows in a sine wave, up, and then it drops down again, it hits zero, it actually goes the other direction, comes back again. It's constantly changing. So what does that mean for the magnetic field? That magnetic field will be constantly changing as well. Right. Magnetic field will expand and then it will contract and it will expand the other direction and then contract and it will just keep doing this as long as the oscillations in the current take place. It's constantly changing. So what does that provide for us? Another principle we know is to generate electricity. I need three things. A conductor, a magnetic field, and relative motion. Now back in DC you took a magnet and you provided the motion to create a voltage. Here we don't need that because the magnetic field is constantly changing. That provides the relative motion. So there's electricity being generated when I run AC down a wire. But what's interesting about how it is generated is that it comes back on itself. I apply a voltage this direction, and as, as the current is increasing, the magnetic field is changing, but it induces a voltage back on itself, a back voltage, if you will, that pushes against the voltage that was applied, the voltage that caused it. Now, that is called self induction. This self-induced back voltage can also be called CEMF, counter electromotive force. Electromotive force is basically means voltage and counter means it's coming back on itself. And this principle is the basis for Lenz's law. A voltage applied in this direction with its changing magnetic field will induce a voltage back on itself, 180 degrees opposite itself, which is a form of opposition. Now in a single piece of wire, it doesn't amount to much. However, if I want to use these principles for some purpose, I can coil up my wire. You've heard of coils. What I basically do is take these wires, coil them up, so that the magnetic field around each one starts working with the others. There's four characteristics that will make a stronger inductor. In other words, give it more inductance. Four characteristics. The more turns I make, the more inductance. Now, those turns, the closer together they are, there will be more inductance, a stronger magnetic field. If I pull them apart, they're not working as well together. The cross-sectional area also plays in. The larger the cross-sectional area, the more inductance. And if I put a core in there, what does a core do? If it is highly permeable, it allows the lines of flux to concentrate, increasing the magnetic field. Those are your four characteristics. Number of turns, the tightness together they are, or in the formula, the length, cross-sectional area, and a core, the permeability of the core. 